Hey, welcome to whatever the fuck this is supposed to be. Uh, but this is not the usual um, now being called uh, WTF is MMT, which is my Patreon as well as my YouTube channel. But this is kind of like a little rant, and um, I hope you understand. I mean, uh, I grew up in Section 8 housing in Seattle. Uh, they turned into just low-income housing voucher types. So it's not officially called Section 8 anymore. It's not that I'm aware of anyway. But when I was growing up in it, uh, the state uh, was handled all property management. They went to to HUD, uh, set, HUD Section 8 properties and looked at it and looked after it and stuff of that nature. And that was I mean, uh, a... An inspection of the property and inspection of the, uh, the people living there and, you know, the cleanliness and stuff of that nature. Uh, that was started, I think, in 78 until uh, 2010, apparently. Um, so here's what's going on as far as Park goes. I think that outsourcing uh, property management is has been proven to me anyway to be really, really, really stupid because when you um, outsource property management to corporations that are in it for the money and not in it necessarily for the uh, for the upkeep and maintenance, hiring and firing of um, employees and making sure that the facility is well-maintained and stuff of that nature. I live that now. Uh, the place I'm in is constant with flooding, constant with firing or hiring of employees. Um, but yet it still hikes up rent uh, every year. Um, and I'm pretty sure the same next year for 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 me as on on a personal note on that, but the biggest problem, and I don't see this as a problem, uh, really as far as allowing families and such in buildings, but the place that I'm in was originally and was supposed to be uh, kept as a uh old age home uh old or a independent living uh building but um whomever did the original agreement with the catholic church here um apparently went against that and i think it's because of the fact that since they are a uh bottom line they have to make money corporation uh any property management that has that has been hired by the city uh, or state to look over uh, said properties are they have income that needs to come in stuff of that nature and when there's low income uh it's you know social security and other things every time there's a boost uh that's when rent is hiked or uh you know utilities become a little more expensive stuff of that nature or um say the the corporate board uh, doesn't want to give much more as far as budgeting, then rents go up as far. And it, this is my guess anyway. Um, anyway, so let's see. Being from Seattle uh, and living in the, I guess you could say, OG of the Section 8 housing before it became a dumbass voucher and before they stopped actually building low-income housing, nor facilitate the ongoing low income people because minimum wage hasn't really have hasn't really gone up in the last 40, 50 years. Uh I think the state has 725 since Obama was in office. Um and I think that was I think that was even done either in his first term or second term, one of the two. But when you have uh people in Congress who regularly give themselves a raise who don't deserve to be in office, let alone given raises, um, when they vote themselves up in wages, and yet people who actually put them in office, quote unquote, um, don't get 
a, a raise, at least not a sustainable raise, then low-income housing will always be needed. So low-income housing, well, housing itself should be a right. It should not be it should not be a for-profit industry. Now they should health care, stuff like that. And my feeling as far as that part goes is since the United States is a currency issuing government and not a currency user like people like um, uh, Paul Ryan said back in the day and was proven to be untrue as far as Social Security goes by uh, Alan Greenspan, who wasn't exactly the same himself, uh, but at least told the truth under testimony. You know, um, I think given the fact that the theory in MMT has become more than a theory, um, I think everything that MMT has and the founders have proposed and set out and actually taught has been the most truthful in, in any economic um, system you could think of. Um, but that's beside the point. My point being here is if the United States can afford through spending legislation by allocating funds, they can quite literally make sure that every single person in the United States has a home uh, that is not above market value, that is below market value at first until minimum wage goes up to the point where someone who has been working their ass off for the past 30, 40 fucking years doesn't have to go bankrupt for health care, doesn't have to go bankrupt for rent, doesn't have to go bankrupt for cost of living uh, because a bunch of corporations want to want to like take money out of the economy, and when the United States government wants to go austerity and take out more money than it, it spends in, and says that's a good thing, that's the dumbest thing. Because if you look back at the first time uh, in my lifetime that the debt has been paid, we went to a fucking recession because there wasn't enough money in the the economy to pay for shit. So, for those who still think that we should be on the gold standard, I would say go learn. Learn more economics because uh, Milton Freeman was wrong. Hayek was wrong. Um, Austrian economics is wrong. Anything that is paid to a commodity is wrong because there's, only, there's an infinite amount of currency that could be put in, but there's only so much commodities to be found, dug up, and mined. These are just my personal views in regards to that. And I do think that anybody who has ever uh, advocated for low-income vouchers, Section 8 vouchers, should never be in office whatsoever. Neither should anybody they teach or be taught that way of doing uh, government because vouchers they don't do shit uh, they at least at least in my view um, we should be having twice three four times the amount of uh, permits being put out, put out there to be able to facilitate building of housing building of infrastructure you name it we had the money just takes those with the balls to say fuck thinking about being a household we have to think about being a government that is on the fiat currency that can spend as much as needed for the facility for facilitation of health care for facilitation of education for the facilitation of not just military spending or military operations stuff in that nature that should be taken out of the mindset. There's a reason why it's a fiat currency. And there's a reason why it's not pegged to anything. It's because discretionary spending should not be discretionary, it should be mandatory spending as far as that part goes. Make sure that a, a toothy Green New Deal is set out there. And make sure that we have an infrastructure that would facilitate, I don't know, uh, commercial groceries to be able to be on time to groceries, forcing 
uh, inventory prices down so people can afford to live. Stuff of that nature. So for anybody who thinks it's going to be extra spending on top of spending, no, actually it's a replacement of one spending for a deflationary spending. That's what the Green New Deal would facilitate. That's what Medicare for all single payer health care would, would facilitate. That's what a jobs guarantee would facilitate. All of which are deflationary. All of which would keep the economy going when there's a downturn. All of which would keep people out of debt even though quite a few people who are currently in office in every state and in every, in every seat in the Congress and the House are paid by those who are in credit creation industries like the banking, credit card, and stuff of that nature. Mortgage lending, again, stuff of that nature. So think of it that way. If you really want to, if you really want to have a budget, a budget that serves the people, you have to spend the money to make the money as far as that part goes, right? So this country does not run on taxes, never has. Uh, when the Constitution was brought up, they had to pay money first in order to get that done. Pay money to make sure that uh, roads were built and other projects were done. So they had to pay, they had to first put the money out there in the economy for the labor to do it. That's provisioning a government, is paying people first before you tax them out. Anyway, that's what I got to say as far as the bar goes. Thank you for listening. Uh, I will more than likely be adding some other stuff from the MMT textbook. Uh, you already know who, who is by. Uh, also, support realprogressive.org. Support my Patreon at uh, WTF underscore is underscore MMT, I believe, with a question mark. By the way, I'll put Quantitative that down in the description easing, below. G -E. For now, peace In the now, absence enjoy, of a capacity to uh, reduce the intercept of the yield next. curve, YC, since their target interbank rates have been so low, central banks in Japan, UK, and USA have resorted to trying to flatten the YC easing, by so-called quantitative easing. In the absence QE. of a capacity to reduce in the simple intercept terms, of the yield this curve, this means that central YC, banks in since these their countries have interbank rates have been for so buying low, long-term treasury banks debt. in Japan and in some UK instances, and USA private sector have resorted financial to trying to flatten the YC the bank by so-called quantitative, quantitative easing. QE. The objective here in is simple to boost terms, demand for this these means financial that central assets, banks in these which countries have their developed market programs for buying and thus lower their treasury debt, thereby and flattening some the YC. Private sector in addition, financial assets the impact from both of the, the private bank and non-bank selling private financial sector. assets to the, the central bank here is that is bank reserves increase, demand for these financial which assets, which contribute to the overall growth of their market prices, prices in these countries, and thus lowers their yields. On the thereby next page, the 367 YC. second in addition, paragraph, the MMT impact challenges of the private whether the direct reduction of financial assets rates to the central QE bank would be is that bank reserves increase in stimulating these economies than the overall growth of bank reserves to official rates, which indirectly on the next page, rates. 367 second paragraph, MMT challenges whether the direct reduction of long-term rates via QE would be any more successful in stimulating these economies than the earlier cuts to official rates which indirectly reduced long-term rates. Hello, kind of back my second one. Uh, Texas Republican trashes $1.7 trillion government spending bill. And uh, pretty soon I'll be going over the actual appropriations bill, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already done as far as like, you know, the YouTube channel and shit. But I kind of want to like kind of, you know, bark back at this idiot. Uh, let's see. Pat balance and they deem a $1.7 trillion omnibus bill approved last week to be garbage. Speaking on Fox News Sunday morning features, the Texas Republican said, in quotes, as you can see, it was an absolute piece of garbage, and that's why I voted only, not only no, but hell no. Sounds from, I think John Boehner said that, like, it was quite a few years ago, it seemed like now, but I remember him saying the same thing as far as another um, uh, another uh, spending bill. Now, it's important, it's important to remember that taxes don't fund any kind of spending bill whatsoever. They have to spend first before they tax it out. 
Um, but anyway, so despite balance, hell no, the that it was approved. Uh, let's see, he said it was uh, it's just littered with pork. That's pretty much spending. I mean, no matter what, I mean, the word pork. I mean, seriously, pork. That means that there's specialized spending in different areas. Like, let's kind of go uh, over that. This is the spending bill itself. Uh, Summary of appropriations provisions by subcommittee. Uh, Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023 totals $1.7 trillion in discretionary resources across the fiscal year uh, 2023 appropriations bills. In total, the regular 12 uh, appropriations bill include $800 billion in non-defense spending fund, uh, $68 billion to 9.3%, uh, no, which is 9.3% over last year. So let's see what it actually funds. So Agricultural Rural Development, FDA, Legislation tackles hunger and nutritional insecurity by expanding access to fruits and vegetables to 6.2 million women, infants, and children through WIC and ensuring that 43.5 million people in SNAP eligible families get necessary benefits. The bill also invests in health of American kids through child nutrition programs like school meals, which are now the healthiest source of food consumed in the United States. That's interesting. Uh, growth, oh, sorry, grows opportunity. Uh, yeah, grows opportunity and lives in rural communities. So this so far is what he's called pork spending. Uh, let's see, rural development and infrastructure. The bill provides nearly $4 billion for rural development programs. The programs help create an environment for economic growth by providing business and housing opportunity and building sustainable rural infrastructure for the modern economy. Rural broadband. The legislation invests over $455 million for expansion of broadband service, internet, stuff of that nature. Um, let's see, uh, to improve education. So he's, apparently he's against rural broadband. He's against educating people, apparently. I don't know. Um, let's see. Also, he's, it's uh, Infrastructure and then Jobs Act. So this is provided $2 billion for that. Uh, these significant investments in broadband reflect a commitment to enabling Americans in rural communities to access digital to tools necessary to improve health, educational, and economic outcomes. Since 2019, more than 200,000 rural residents have gained access to broadband through these programs. Critical infrastructure. Again, all this is what he considered pork spending. Legislation includes responsible infrastructure investments to help the country's, country's rural area access accessible utilities. So that's, I'm guessing, electricity, sewage, and other things of that nature. Uh, let's see, this includes, yeah, $4.47 billion for rural water and waste program loans. So he wants people to live in crap, basically. Um, and over 500 million water, well, wait, uh, grants for clean and re reliable drinking water. I wonder if this has anything to do with Flint, which I hope it does. Systems and sanitary waste disposal systems, which will provide safe drinking water to millions of rural residents. An additional 8.2 billion in loan authority uh, in providing for rural electric and telephone. So this, so it's, it's okay, so it's basically it's providing enough money to be able to for people to be loaned money to infrastructure, uh, create infrastructure and in, in rural electric stuff of that nature. Rural housing loans and rental assistance. So he wants be he wants people to be homeless. The bill provides a total of three hundred no, no, sorry thirty billion in loan authority for a single family housing guaranteed loan program. The bill includes $1.25 billion in direct single-family housing loans, meaning, so in other words, it's not free money. 
the person is loaned money, like kind of like a, a mortgage, meeting the uh, estimate need for these loans, which provide home loan assistance uh, to low-income rural families, many of them or many of whom would have few loan options. So in other words, she wants to give them no options uh, for purchasing a, a home because of their geographical location. In addition, a total of $1.49 billion is provided for rental assistance and rental vouchers for affordable renting housing for low-income families. So basically what I live in as far as Alberta goes. So he wants to keep someone like myself out of housing. Um Let's see. It's provided for rental assistance and rental vouchers for affordable rental housing, as I just mentioned. Um, let's see. Uh, rural communities to renew all existing rental assistance contracts uh, in fiscal year 2020. Rural development housing program provided affordable housing to 138,331 rural homeowners and over 250,000 rental units. Business and Industry Loan Program. The bill includes $1.8 billion for the Business and Industry Loan Program, a 45% increase over fiscal year 2022. This will enable additional lending opportunities to business and nonprofits in rural areas. Food and Nutritional Program. The bill contains discretionary funding as well as mandatory funding required by law for food and nutritional programs within the development of agriculture. This includes funding for the special sub the SSNP for women, infants, and children, or WIC, uh, the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, SNAP, and Child Nutritional Program. So again, he wants people to go hungry. Okay. Uh, women, infants, and children. The bill provides $6 billion in discretionary funding for WIC and maintains the increase of fruits and vegetables in the WIC food package, in fiscal 2023, WIC will serve an estimated 6.2 million women, infants, and children. Uh, see some mental nutrition assistance program or SNAP. The bill provides 153.8 billion in required mandatory spending for SNAP, including 3 billion for the SNAP reserve fund. I guess that's the emergency uh, fund measure which will uh, serve more than 43 million people. This fully funds participants as well as uh, participation, excuse me, as well as SNAP enhanced allotments authorized by Family First Coronavirus Res uh, Response Act. Uh, children nutritional uh, nutrition programs. The bill provides 28.5 billion in funding for children or uh, child nutritional programs. This is an increase of $1.66 billion above the fiscal year 2022 in NAT level, or NAT level, rather. As kids return to classroom, this funding will support more than 5.2 billion school lunches and snacks. In addition, the bill provides $40 million for the summer EBT program, $30 million for school kitchen equipment grants, and $3 million for school breakfast expansion grants. International Food uh, assistance, uh, assistance Program. The bill includes $2.2 billion for international food aid and to promote U.S. agricultural exports overseas. This includes $1.75 billion for Food for Peace grants and $243 million for the McGovern Dole International Food for Education and Child Nutrition Program, in addition to emergency funds provided in Ukraine's supplemental in 2022. Uh, see, these programs which work to reduce famine and increase food security overseas provide food assistance across six continents. So he also wants people in other countries to starve. Okay. Marketing programs. This I may have a problem with. The bill provides $237 million, $11 million above the fiscal year 2022, enacted level of, and, and sorry, <clears throat> uh, an active level and 4.2 million above the request to facilitate the movement of agricultural products and open market opportunities. This includes 22.8 million for, new, for national organic program to protect the integrity of the USDA organic level and labels, excuse me, and 30.2 million for oversight and enforcement. So I mean, I may not have a problem with that, with that after all. Uh, the Packers, the Packers and Stockyards Act. 
<clears throat> the bill also provides 20, wait, okay, 20.4 million in discretionary funds to the agricultural marketing service and rural development for the local agricultural or agriculture market program to continue supporting local food and value added our agriculture. In addition, the bill provides 25 million to support dairy business innovation uh, initiatives. Not really sure what that means, but anyway. Point being is, let's see. Now let's go with military. Let's see. Commerce, uh, justice, science. Okay, so fiscal. Well, first, let's go with this, of course. Uh, fiscal year 2023, commerce, justice, science, and related agencies funding bill provides 82.2 billion, uh, an increase of 6.1 billion, uh, 7.8% above fiscal year 2022. The bill creates good-paying American jobs with investments in economic development in distressed communities with support for small businesses, including small and medium-sized American manufacturers. So it seems like they want to bring up our supply chain, which is good. Strengthens communities by supporting low local law enforcement while bolstering police and criminal justice reform and expanding gun violence prevention efforts. Depends on what that means by efforts as far as that part goes. Uh, this part I don't really agree with because I think we have enough cops on the streets in the beginning. Uh, we don't have enough cops trained for for any kind of mental crisis or psychological crisis. Excuse me. Uh, okay, so addresses gender-based violence with strong increases for violent uh, violence against women act prevention prevention and prosecution programs, as well as an efforts to reduce the backlog of unprocessed rape kits. Confronts the climate crisis with strong funding for climate resilience and research of NASA, the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the National Science uh, Foundation. Okay. So, so far, I've seen him not want to give any money for uh, manufacturing uh, or the possibility of manufacturing anyway. Uh, let's see. The prevention of gun violence. Uh, the see the he endorses apparently uh violence against women and gender based violence, uh so far. Uh, if he says the spending is pork, um, let's see U.S. Department of Com Commerce eleven point two billion is net discretionary funding for Department of Commerce at an increase of one point three billion above the fiscal year twenty twenty two enacted level. International Trade Administration, RRTA, $625 million, $55 million above the fiscal year 2022 uh, NAFTA level. The total include uh, full, uh, fully and uh, full funding the ITA global markets to help create jobs here at home by increasing U.S. exports and continuing funding for ITA enforcement and compliance to protect U.S. industries against unfair foreign trade practices. How about the unfair trade practices here at home? Yeah. Uh, let's see, Bureau of Industry and Security, or BIS, BS, no, I'm just, being, I'm just playing with that, BIS, 191 million, an increase at 50 million above fiscal year 2022, the advance to advance U.S. national security to effective export control. Hmm. Uh, Economic Development Administration, EDA. Uh, 498 million, an increase of 124.5 million above fiscal year 2022. This includes 121 million for EDA's public works program, which supports brick and mortar projects to di in distressed communities across the nation. 48 million for assistance to coal communities, an increase of 6.5 million. So that's a win for uh, for mansion. Uh, I believe that means that they're going to, they're trying to pay people to transition from coal mines and other things of that nature to uh, natural gas pipe and pipelines, I think. But I could be wrong about that last part. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, okay, so let's see. Da -da. Increase for 6.5 million at 50 million for a regional innovation program and increase of 5 million to help create jobs by establishing and expanding uh, regional focus, uh, focus innovation, technology, business endeavors, additional 3 million to provide for STEM apprenticeships to help align the skills of workers and the need, uh, needs of employers. 
a minority business development agency, 70 million, an increase of about 15 million above um, fiscal year 2022 is provided for MBDA to support minority business across the, businesses across the country. A U.S. Patent and Trademark, or PTO, $4.25 billion, an increase of 195, $195 million above fiscal year 2020, 2022 to help protect new ideas and investments in American innovation and creativity and to promote technology progress and achievements. So in other words, more money for them to be able to take other patents and use it for their own uh, uses, I think, anyway. National Oceanic and Atmospheric uh, NOAA, 6.3 billion, uh, an increase of 474.8 million above this whole year 2022, including climate research, 224.2 million, an increase of 24.2 million above fiscal uh, year 2022, with a focus on informing climate resilience efforts, Western water uh, issues, and wildfires and drought. Uh, National Marine Fishermen's uh, Fisheries Services, $1.09 billion for, NF, for NMFS operations, and an increase of $77.4 million in fiscal year 2022. Now, the Weather Service, $1.25 billion for operating expenses, an increase of $72.9 million of a fiscal year 2022. In addition, this act provides an increase of $91.2 million over fiscal year 2022 to procure future weather satellites and re related systems, which are essential for accurate weather forecasting. So again, all this to Pat, whatever, whatever his last name is, um, all this is pork to him, basically. So, so far we've established one, this is all spending, none of it's tax related. Uh, it would only need to be taxed out. Um, two, he's against women. He's against uh, gender equality, basically. He's against uh, funding for nutritional programs. He's um, for more uh, uh, violence against women, um, stuff like that. Anyway. So the Department of Justice, uh, DOJ, 38.7 billion overall for the Department of Justice, which is 3.5 billion uh, above the fiscal year 2022 enacted level. Oh, I probably should have warned you this might take a while because I'm actually trying to go through the whole damn thing. So I could point, so I get the point across in regards to spending and, you know, my agreements and disagreements with the whole thing. And this is the first bit I've done for a while. And usually I'm doing, um, uh, little parts from the MMT textbook. You can see that on my, uh, on my, on my, or here that I should say on my, uh, my TikTok. Uh, WTF is uh, MMT question mark. Anyway, uh, see U.S. Department of Justice. I've already read that. Yeah, Dimit Till unsolved civil rights crimes reauthorization act of 2016. <clears throat> Fifteen million. <clears throat> excuse me. To provided uh, is provided. As authorized, included five million within this uh, within the Civil Rights Division, five million within the Federal Bureau of FBI, one point five million within the Community Related Relations Service, and three point five million within the state and local law enforcement assistance. Uh, Executive Office for Immigration Revive uh, Review, excuse me, uh, eight hundred sixty million, an increase of one hundred million above fiscal year twenty twenty two, including. 29 million for the legal orientation program. Um, let's see, federal uh, FBI, uh, 11.33 billion uh, in increase um, uh, in actual level, and 524 million above the president's budget request, including the, for the efforts of investigation, extreme violence, and domestic terrorism. Um, let's see. So, again, he's against that. Uh, United States attorneys, 2.63, so in other words, this is the prosecution, I'm guessing, uh, 2.63 billion, an increase of 212, uh, 212.1 million above fiscal year 2022, including the to further support for precautions related to January 6th attack on couple and domestic and terrorist cases. In other words, we want to make sure more, there are more officers available for that kind of thing, I would suspect. Uh, see that Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, NAFTA, I think not NAFTA, but uh, ATF, there we go. And ATF, 
Split ATF, uh, 1.75 billion, an increase of 215.9 million above fiscal year 2022 enacted levels to bolster efforts to prevent and respond to gun violence. Uh, the BOP, the Federal Bureau of Prison, or yeah, BOP, uh, 8.7 uh, billion, an increase of 592.6 million above fiscal year. Uh, 2022 enacted level and 497.3 million above the president's budget required to address critical staffing and facility needs for both inmate and correctional officer safety. Uh, FSA, the agreement uh, fully uh, funds the request for 9.5 million for programs and activities authorized by the First Step Act of 2018, including medication assistance treatment. Okay, so grants to state and local law enforcement, 4.4 billion. This is the part of the part that he actually likes. 4.4 billion is provided an increase of 506.4 million uh, above fiscal year 2022. This includes 770.8 million for burned JAG, 662.9 million for community oriented uh, police services or COPS programs. 225 million to address sexual assault kit and other DNA evidence, maybe used against that, uh, backlogs. 125 million for a second chance at programs, he's probably just that. 445 million for grant programs to address substance uh, use disorders. 135 million for stop school violence. Uh, 700 million for uh, violence against women or, ba or BAWA or BAWA. Prevention and persecution programs, he's probably just that. 95 million for grants to improve the NIS and, and, and ICS, uh, firearms background checks system, he's probably just that. 50 million for common community violence intervention and prevention, he's probably just that. Uh, 45 million to prevent and other hate crimes, and more than 400 million in community projects to fight crime and improve public safety in communities across the country. So let's see, NASA. I'm going to skip that. I don't think I don't know if he's against that for it, whatever. Uh, NSF. Uh, see, uh, da, da, da. education human resources. No, no, no. no. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, Equal uh, employment uh, employment opportunity commission four hundred fifty five million three thirty five million. About okay. He's probably against that one. Um, let's see, defense, let's see, he's paid for this stuff. Um, the fiscal year 2023 Department of Defense Appropriations Act, uh, 797.7 billion in discretionary spending, an increase of 69.3 billion above uh, fiscal year 2022. Now all this stuff I disagree with. I don't think we should be building up a defense for something that's not there. Um, or at least not going to be attacking us since people saw what happened after 9-11, which there are some people who say it was, not, it was an inside job. I mean, if the Cheney sat there and said not to put, not to allow planes up there to, uh, to inter intercept those planes, there's a possibility, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know much about that. Anyway, so let's see. Da -da -da. The package prioritizes support for military families, including increasing pay for 4.6%, basic allowance for housing by 11%, the basic allowance for subs subsistence by 11%, includes 210 million reduced food prices at commissaries, and increase funds for school construction to, oh wait, yeah, for school construction to as high as ever uh, level of 687 million. Provides critical assistance for Ukraine. She's probably against that part, uh, including 9.3 billion for Ukraine security assistance initiatives in the uh, base tax and supplemental supplemental with resources for training, equipment, weapons, supplies, and services. Yeah, I'm kind of against all that since we kind of back to we kind of back to war in the first place. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this part is probably he's probably for uh, defense democracy encounters uh, China with funding to protect a free and open in, uh, Indo Pacific. 
uh, supports militation and measures to avoid and mitigate and respond to uh, civil harm, civilian harm, uh, conf confronts the climate crisis with more than $2 billion in investment for clean energy and climate adaptation of, to protect families, readiness, and global security. He's probably against that. Uh, addresses gender-based violence with funding to tackle sexual assault in the military and direct DOD to report an ex any extremist activities prior against that. It includes nearly $8 billion to address inflation and other cost increases above President budget requests, including assistance in, to military families, fuel utilities for Department of Services, medical inflation, and procurement of R&D programs prior against that. Let's see. Military personnel, uh, seven one hundred seventy-two point seven billion. The fiscal year twenty twenty-two military personnel recommendation uh, is one hundred seventy-two point seven billion in funding for active, reserve, and national guard military personnel. A decrease uh, is a decrease of one point two billion below the budget request, an increase of five point eight billion above fiscal year twenty twenty-two. So it's still above it. Uh, the bill funds active duty and strength uh, duty and strength at the authorized level of um, one point three sixteen nine forty four. I guess that's a billion and fund reserve components and end strength at the authorized authorized level of seven hundred seventy billion four hundred in order to take care of our service members and families. The bill. Fully it provides full full funding necessary to support the proposal. It proposed four point six billion uh, pay rise, so the unit pay raise is probably just that. Provides an eleven percent increase for military personnel to help offset the cost of higher rent and food prices. Probably just that. In doing so, the bill includes three hundred twenty eight million above the budget request for the basic allowance for subs uh, subsistence and um, one point two billion above the budget request for the basic allowance for housing. Again, he's probably, he's probably against all that. Remember, he's always full of pork. Uh, let's see. Provides greater flexibility for service members to secure housing during change of st station moves by expanding the coverage from 10 to 14 days. To do so, the bill provides $164.2 million above the budget request for temporary lodging expenses. So let's see. Operation and maintenance. Uh, let's see, so I guess OM uh, operation and maintenance recommendation. Uh, it, this is an increase of 6.8 billion, uh, about the budget request, the increase of 21.8 billion about the fiscal. Okay, so I mean, it's still more spending as far as military, which I don't agree with, but whatever, as far as the active duty sort of thing. Um, I think that they should all get funding for mental health and after they retire, uh, and they should get a pay increase for when they're in, but I don't support the, any wars and shit of that nature. Anyway, so let's see, uh, provide $1.8 billion for environmental res restoration activities. Uh, let's see. Uh, 1.8 billion in facility, facilities sustained a uh, sustainment repair and modernization program. Okay, so let's see. Um, 351 million for the cooperative threat reduction program. Okay, so NDA. Uh, this is the part he probably likes to provide 60 million for impact aid and 20 million for impact aid for those with disabilities and 15 million to address. Section 575, the first year, 2023, at the NDAA. Let's see, procurements. I mean, this is all military funding right here. Let's see. Yeah, this stuff he probably likes. Let's see. Research, development, test, evaluation. Aircrafts, vehicles, and ground forces, others, revolving and management funds. The fiscal year of revolving and management funds recommendation of one point sixty five billion in base funding, which is seventy four seventy one million above the budget request. Uh, other Department of Defense programs, defense health programs. Let's see. Uh, thirty-nine point six billion for medical and healthcare provide programs of the Department of Defense. Within the this toll adds, 
582 million for five million for cancer research. The total amount is distributed as follows. For cancer research, prostate cancer, kidney cancer, ovarian cancer, lung cancer, mel melanoma, the anyway, uh rare cancers. Okay, so that's you might like that. I don't know. Uh, okay, so spinal cord research uh for the joint uh warfighter medical research program. Okay. Chemical agents and munitions destruction. One billion as requested. Uh, overseas humanitarian disaster and civic aid. <clears throat> 170 million for foreign disaster relief. Uh, humanitarian assistance and humanitarian mine action program. 57 million above the budget request. Uh, drug uh, interdiction and counter drug activities. 971 million, including 200 million for the National Guard counter uh, drug program. Let's see, security cooperation program, 300 million for Ukrainian security assistance initiatives. This is in addition uh, to 9 billion for the initiative and 11.88 billion to replenish United States stocks of equipment sent to uh, Ukraine, provided by additional Ukraine Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2023. So, yeah, so let's see. None of this is taxpayer money. All of this is spending into a economy. Um, all of this is getting paid to the military industrial complex. Nobody said, how are we going to pay for this shit? They just did it. So this should tell you that we have the capabilities of spending on shit we don't actually need. But there are quite a bit of few things that are, are needed in regards to rural broadband, school lunches, uh, mental health uh, programs, um, community business um, uh, type loans. Those things shouldn't be loans. Those should be predicated based on what those businesses actually make and not loans loans. It's kind of like PP loans as far as upper goes. But anyway, so let's see. Let's see. Oversight and general provisions. No funds may be used in... Uh, in contravention of the War Power Resolution, no funds for the Russian state-owned arms export uh, export agency, uh, Rose, Rose Baron Export, uh, no funds for Azov Battalion. That's important right there. Azov Battalion is supposed to be like a Nazi fucking thing out there. But yet, on the flag that was shown in Congress, there was the Nazi symbol on the flag. It was like a very small one, but it was still noticeable to anybody that saw it as far as the part goes. So this is, I guess you could say, kind of like um, the uh, in, inadvertently uh, funding for COVID, you know, that sort of thing, you know, that development thing. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see, no funds for Taliban. I'm not really sure why they had that in the first place. And I don't, we're not in Afghanistan anymore. Um no funds for countries in violation of uh, Child Soldiers Prevention Act provides that nothing in this act may construct uh, as a authorization uh, authorizing the use of force against Iran or North Korea requires the Secretary of Defense to notify Congress after receipt of foreign contributions. Hmm. Uh, requires the Secretary of Defense to notify or no, and uh, no, yeah notify Congress after a foreign base is opened or closed. Provides one million dollars in the army for the renaming of installations, facilities, roads, and streets that bear the name of Confederate leaders and officers, since the army has the preponderance of the entities to change. In other words, okay, so it provides the money for that. Okay, uh, includes six hundred eighty-six point five million to construct, renovate, repair, or expand public schools. On military installations and requires laborers and mechanics to be paid uh, prevailing wages. Includes over one billion for prior year uh, rescissions, one billion for improvement for uh, restructure uh, infrastructure and defueling of the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility, uh, one point fifty three billion for revised economic consumptions for procurement and R and D programs. Energy and water development. 
Okay, so let's see. Energy and Water Development and Related Agencies Funding Bill provides $54.65 billion, including $54 billion in Division D and $650 million in emergency funds. The disaster implementation includes $2.65 billion in addition, additional funds in Ukraine. So, so a lot of money for Ukraine here. Um creates tens of thousands of good paying jobs with a focus on deploying clean energy technology and green jobs tomorrow uh, in communities across the country. Yeah, hold on. So let's see. Ah, it confronts the climate crisis with more than 15.3 billion of transformative investments in clean energy and science, which will help develop clean, affordable, and secure American energy, rebuilds our national water infrastructure, uh, critical pro to protecting communities from more frequent and severe storms and addressing the worsening drought. Let's see, more money for an Army Corps, Corps of Engineer. Investigation, construction, operation, maintenance, and harbor maintenance trust fund projects. Department of Interior and Bureau of Rec Rec Reclama Reclamation. Uh, Central Utah Project, Bureau of Reclamation. Re Reclamation. Uh, Department of Energy to build provides a total of $46.5 billion for the department, including $46.2 billion in Division D and $300 million in emergency funds. The disaster supplemental uh, includes $1.5 billion additional fund and Ukraine. Of course, okay, there's a lot of money going to Ukraine here. Uh, see, energy efficiency and renewable energy. The bill provides a record level of $3.5 billion, an increase of $260 million over above the fiscal year 2022 Level this funding provides for clean, affordable, and secure energy and ensures American leadership in transition to a global clean energy economy. State and community energy programs. The, pro the bill provides 471 million and an effective increase of 50, uh, 44 million, rather, above fiscal year 2022. This funding will support the Weatherization Assistance Program, the Weatherization Readiness Fund, State Energy Program, Local Government Energy Program, and Energy Future Grants. Also made for uh, cybersecurity, energy security, emergency, and emergency responses, electricity, nuclear energy. To build. The bill provides a total of $1.8 billion, including $1.5 million. Billion, excuse me, Division D and 300 million in emergency funds. This is an increase of 118 billion, 18 million rather. Um, the funding invests in research, development, and demonstration activities that develop the next question a generation of clean and safe reactors. Nothing, there's no part of nuclear energy that is fucking safe. But anyway, uh, further improve the safety and economic volatility of our current uh, reactor fleet and contribute to the national long term leadership in the global nuclear power industry. That's what is nuclear power. Um, fossil energy and carbon management. The bill provides 890 million increase of 65 million about the fiscal year 2022. The, this funding advances carbon reduction and mitigation in sectors and applications that are difficult to decarbonize, including the industrial sector with technologies and methods such as carbon capture and storage, hydrogen and direct air capture while assisting in facilitating the transition towards a net zero carbon economy and rebuilding a U.S. critical minerals supply chain. So all of this he considers his fucking pork. The fact that, he's a, that he has a job as a charity that should never be funded again. Anyway, so science. Okay. Nuclear waste disposal. Uh, the bill provides ten million for oversight of the nuclear waste fund. Let's see, advanced research project agency energy. The bill provides four hundred seventy million, an increase of twenty million about the year twenty twenty two level. The, this funding supports research aimed at rapidly developing energy technologies that are capable of significantly changing the energy sector to address the nation's critical economy, environmental, and energy security challenges. 
Indian Energy Policy and Programs. Okay, so first of all, they shouldn't have called it fucking Indian Energy. His indigenous energy of anything. Uh, the bill provides seventy five million, an increase of seventeen million above policy research analysis and financial assistance to indigenous tribes, Alaska tri uh, indigenous villages, and regional corporations, and tribal and, and tribal energy resource development organization. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, the environmental management, uh, non-defense, environmental cleanup, uranium enrichment. Okay, yeah, so this is the new part. 879 million, the increase of 19 million above fiscal year. Okay, so above the request. Defense environmental cleanup, loan guarantee programs. The bill maintains funding necessary to man manage the programs. Additional, uh, additionally, the bill provides 15 billion addition loan authors authority for Title 17 innovative technology loan guarantee program and 2 million additional credit subsidy for tribal energy loan guarantee programs. Huh. Okay. Anyway, so I will be continue this another time because this is a very long uh thing. So. Uh, thank you for listening for the moment, watching, and I'll be right back later on with this, part two of this. Peace out for now.